Good morning everybody. I just thought I would do a really quick project share. I made this little folio album as a way to capture some really special memories of my little bunny who we lost last fall and I've just been doing this as sort of therapy and I've just kind of went through a big period of depression and I just tried to find a way to get myself going again and this was a way for me to feel really good and think about him and order lots and lots of photos so that he can still stay really close and be a big part of our life. And so this is what I came up with. This is the new folio album die from Sizzix. It's a scoreboard die. And this is the Tim Holtz potted die along with the uh, bunnies that came out last year. And this is the old tattered rose uh, flower die. So I have this little clasp here and I use the full uh, covers so it opens up like this and then it opens up again like this and I made my pages using the hinge hidden hinge die that goes with this and so I ended up with some pocket pages and I used uh, the uh, die to make the pocket pages that's the accessory die and that comes with these little pockets and then this is a memory box tag uh, die that I had. And I literally cut this out from a Peter Rabbit book. And it come, it goes in and out. And this is an old Spellbinders on the edge die. So these are Graphic 45 tags. And all of this paper came from a, the same collection. I can't remember who made this paper, but it's really it's about five years old. It was in my stash. So I have the die to make the uh, paper to go over these pre-purchased tags for the big tag. And that worked out really nicely. So I'm hoping to put some photos in here. Um, Brownie, my bunny, he loved birds and he just loved soothing music and he was such a gentle soul and this, all of this just reminds me of him running through the garden and singing, listening to the birds and loving pretty music. And I love the way Beatrix Potter captured the bunnies in her artwork because Everything she did to me captured the soul of a bunny and the, the beautiful, loving spirit that you can see through their eyes. And it's just, this is my favorite illustration out of all the paintings that she's done. And I have a fuller version of this up on the wall in my craft room now. So then from Red Lead Paperworks, they had a really cute bunny stamp set. And they looked really realistic. And so I took all the bunnies from that set and put them in, stamped them onto a lot of these tags. So I'll put photos on the back and then uh, just write some uh, journaling memories on some of these tags and just keep adding to it over the years. Um, so the, what I found is I put these page inserts in using glossy accents and it was just too stiff so my pages are not moving. It's just I'm, I'm attributing that to the glossy accents. It may still be the case that they're stiff. I can't get this page to lie down flat at all and I'm not sure why but I plan on making this album again so we'll see if using score tape will make a difference or not but this is what I got with the glossy accent so it's a bit of a bummer that doesn't really want to lay down so here's another bunny uh, from the uh, stamp set and my our bunnies would literally stand up on their hind legs like that so they it just they captured it so perfectly um, with this stamp uh, collection uh, from Red Lead Paperworks. And um, here we go again. I tried to use this new Tim Holtz uh, floral die and there's no edges to it and I was getting really frustrated so I cut it down and put one of the bunnies on top there. And then here's one of the uh, pocket pockets from the accessory die. Um, and then here's an old uh, Tim Holtz die and I have a very old punch um, from the company that produces the Tim Holtz dies and I just put these tiny little tags that came from that tag die set and this little bunny is one of my favorites it's just reminding me of Brownie so much because Brownie would look like that a lot he was a Holland Lot bunny and um, then here's another uh, page where I tried to turn it into a pocket page and I just use an old on the edge punch and this bunny is also my favorite. He, Our bunnies would do, rub their little faces with their paws and they were always doing this and um, so every time I saw 
we we had our bunny. Um, he was about ten years old in human years, but maybe about eighty-five years old in bunny years. So he was with us for a very, very, very long time. And so I was always looking for bunny stamps and anything related to bunnies I would get and bring into the house. Um, one thing about this pocket die, there's two of them. One allows you to expand a little bit and the other one doesn't. And the one that doesn't expand is very, very tight. So I can barely get anything in and out of this pocket right here. Um, here I took an old Tim Holtz uh, policy envelope die and I made it out of vellum, which was I love because it doesn't interfere with the paper and it's very thin so there's more room to go in the pocket. And then I put some little um, tags inside and then I just tried to decorate uh, little accessory things with some old punches that I had. So here's a good way to show how there's two pockets. This one has a little bit of looseness because it has some folded over edges that give you uh, the ability to fit things in. The other die is doesn't have that and so it's very very tight. It's hard to work with. And uh, on this page I put these two uh, tags with the bunny stamps and they just, this is my, my brownie, he just looked like that all the time. I wished I had known how to make these pockets so that I folded over the edges to give it a little bit more depth and I just wanted to point something out. Um, I forgot I had this <laughs> in my die collection but this is called a circle notch border from memory, uh, memory box and I think you could use one of these. Next time I make this album, I'll definitely plan on using one of these. And then, like, probably that size. And it will just be die cut this way so your finger can, you know, something can slip in and out there. And I was just use this as a series of cascading pockets for this page right here, I think. Um, and then there is a... Uh, waterfall die that's an accessory die that goes with this folio die but since I already have one from Spellbinders and I measured it and it worked perfectly I went ahead and just used that because I had it. Um, I had some issues because I wasn't I was really tired one day and I accidentally put this on uh, upside down <laughs> on this side so I had to rip it out and re-glue it so there was a little bit of glue damage so I had to just tape in some little pieces of paper in there. It's just, I don't care. I'm fine with it. The paper of pink that I had didn't match perfectly well, but um, then I will really have uh, look forward to putting some uh, photos in there that will fit inside this waterfall. And so uh, because I put this hardware in here, there's a uh, brads that I secured it with, uh, it's such a bummer. It shows through on the inside. So I had to cover the inside spines here with another piece of paper. And by the time I got to that point, I was really running out of paper to pick from. So I just had to use my least favorite paper. I'm not a fan of that paper. I'm so bummed. With every project I ever do, there's always this point where I'm like, okay, it, it was perfect, and then I did something. So anyways, uh, I'm kind of kind of bummed about that. So, um, there's a couple of ways this dot, this album can close. You can close it this way, and then go like this. But because of how chunky my pages are, they were very, they became very full. I'm unable to close it that way. And so I learned that very quickly depending on whether you have pocket pages or uh, just plain pages, you kind of have to work that out before you start decorating because you're going to want to know what can fit within each of the two sections. So for me it worked out that I was able to get the waterfall here and then I turned this into a pocket page and then I, these are my pocket pages that go into the binding and then I'm able to close it this way and then because of that because there's so much going on in here there's no room to do anything in here it's just this is the side where I think people put the little pocket uh, piece that comes with this die where you can turn this section into a pocket on this side or on that side 
I originally thought that I might be able to use this uh, binding to put another hidden hinge binding, but there's no way you're going to be able to do that. It's just too wide. It's du almost double the width. So, anyways, um, we'll see how this goes once I get the photos in, in here. Um, I'm not sure. I was trying to guess how many photos could fit in here, and I'm thinking maybe 20 if I'm lucky, because these pockets are already pretty full with the tags. So, and so there'd be like a, a photo here and a photo on both sides of that tag. I don't know if this pocket will be able to handle photos on both sides and then still be able to close. So the one disappointment I found with this album is that it would have been nice if it had been designed so that a lot more photos could fit into it. But I think it's more uh, meant to be something, well, the way it was designed, you'll end up with something where you can do enough photos for a birthday party or Halloween or some one-off event, but not a huge collection of photos is what I was thinking. So anyways, so this um, closes like this and it'll go right back into here. This is a little fiddly. Um, this is the other thing I noticed about the die. It doesn't want to close easily when you use it with the full two covers. So it tends to want to kind of pull in here. And the other thing I wanted to mention about this die is they designed it so that you can use it with elastic that you thread through these holes and I or the hidden hinge binding, which I preferred. And so it's a bit of a bummer because I don't want the elastic. I wanted to use the hidden hinge, but uh, they designed it so you could do it both ways. So you're kind of stuck with holes and grooves for the elastic and if you don't want that there's nothing you can really do about it except cover it up. And because I ran out of this paper I didn't have anything left to cover it up with and I didn't really want to gunk it up with flowers and stuff like that. So it's a bit of a bummer. I think they should have made it without holes and grooves because they did do the hidden hinge. It should have been one or the other. Um, but anyways, uh, that was kind of a bummer for me to see that. I saw a really neat video online where somebody cut off the covers and just eliminated the hinge altogether and used book binding tape. And so I'd love to try that on another uh, effort um, in making this because I definitely think I could see myself making a lot of these for myself and as gifts. And uh, I'm really happy with the way uh, it turned out. And it's just going to be super fun to keep on my desk and I had made I when I bought this die I uh, I bought this little tiny book die which is also a scoreboard die and I used some of the paper and it is just the covers are attached with velcro and I created this little notebook and I had this sweet little stamp with bunnies and so every other page has a bunny and I just made some signature pages and then glued it together with some PH book binding glue and a little bit of it got over the edge so I'm just learning this is my first time doing that but it was a super cool way to create a block of uh, signature pages with just PH glue and then I taped it to the back with score tape and these are two covers from the tiny book die and I just secured them together in the back there and so now I have a little matching notebook that kind of goes with my album and just something to kind of keep by my side, very close by my side. I have photos of Brownie all over my craft room now with a bunch of Beatrix Potter photo uh, prints and he's just everywhere. He's surrounded all over the house so I can see him everywhere now but I, there's nothing really at my eye view and so I just wanted to have something really close that I can just see him all the time. I thought I would just end this video by talking about um, how I developed uh, this because it was very, very new to me with the distress inks. And in case it's new for other people, I just thought I'd tack it on to the end of my video. Um, I thought I would talk about what colors I used um, and what products I used. I have not had good experiences with the distress ink. I, I just don't like the way it works and I've been so unhappy. And something that was a big breakthrough for me was there mixed media heavyweight cardstock. That made all the difference in the world. I think there's a vellum finish to it. 
so it allows you to glide the ink across the paper a lot easier and I also use these makeup brushes that uh, make it a lot easier to distribute the ink so I didn't use any uh, product like Distress Stain it was just all my old school Distress inks, no Distress Oxides and the colors that I used um, for the pot uh, a lot of people were using Rusty Hinge so that's the color I used, it worked out really well and then for the uh, edges um, to kind of make it look like it's kind of dirty with some shadows I used the Walnut Stain I think this is a shade lighter than the Espresso which just kind of felt like uh, potted clay and then in order to add some green um, I think Tammy Bastiani, I talked to her on Instagram she had been, she was trying to help me, she said she used, a, uh, she dabbed with her finger a little bit of grit paste and then once that dried you can take a little bit of distress crayon like peeled paint, that's the color I use for the grass and then just rub it in and kind of make it look even more textured but I didn't want to get over invested in all that product so I just wanted to use what I already had because I already had to spend money on the dyes and all that so um, anyways I would have loved to have done that but it's like a lot more money and I'm not sure if I'd ever use it again um, so then what I also finally did was I took some peeled paint after I uh, inked all of this up I I die cut everything and then I spritzed it with water and then I let that dry and then I took a little bit of pe peeled paint and tried to add green in the areas where the water had uh, broken through the paint and tried to do the green that way instead of using it with the grit paste so with the uh, grass this is a memory box uh, grass dye that I just inked up a whole sheet of mixed media cardstock spritzed it with water and then die cut that and got my little grass and for the bunnies, the way I did those was I used two colors. First, of course, I die cut it with the mixed media cardstock, and then I used these sponge daubers and I inked them up with antique linen first. And then the second color that I used was, oh, I'm so sorry, um, gathered twigs. So the bunnies were antique linen and gathered twigs. And first I did antique linen all over, and then I just did the gathered twigs on the edges. And then I lightly did the gathered twigs all over and spritzed them with water. And I noticed these browns are not as water reactive as the orange, which was very, very interesting. I could not get those browns to water react, so you have to really put on a lot of water to get them to look water colored when you use that technique. Um, this bunny is behind the pot. I didn't layer up the pot. Other people were putting the pot on a thin piece of chipboard and getting some dimension. I didn't do that. I did have to put the, a pop dot under the bunny's head, and I think I'm going to have to put another pop, pop dot under his ear. And then, finally I wanted to say this tattered rose dye. I used the, uh, that old Tim Holtz tattered rose dye to add a little bit of flowers uh, down here. I think this would have been really cute with some mushrooms or other things as well. Uh, Tammy had this incredible uh, piece where she had used some uh, funky floral dyes to make cabbages and carrots. It's like, I wish I could do that. I could barely figure out how to do these flowers. But I thought I would just end this video by showing how I kind of figured out how to get these flowers to uh, do what I was able to do. And I think I did it a little differently than how other people were doing it. I was watching uh, Tim's uh, video on uh, how he made his tattered pine cones from his Christmas video and I I just I couldn't get it to work and you can you can see that I I used his method and I just had a bunch of ucky flowers and they I think how I did mine at least they look a little better so what I realized is probably everybody has to kind of find their own way into how to get it to work for themselves so what I did was I die cut these pieces and then I spritzed it with water. I had seen someone talking about crumpled, crumpling it up or spritzing it, let it dry, crumple, make the rose, spritz it, crumple it, let it dry. I've heard all kinds of things about water. Ultimately what you have to do is break down the fibers of your cardstock, especially if you're using high quality heavyweight cardstock. So what Tim did was he started his by full, folding over the edge of his little pine cone edges. And this is very similar to the tattered pine cone. These are the tattered roses. 
So I couldn't get any traction with that with my paper. It's just such a heavyweight cardstock. So I'm just going to uh, spritz this with water um, off camera. And uh, I'm using this mini mister. I don't really like it, but I lost my really good bottle, the new bottle that Ranger has. So I, um, I just literally get the, the paper wet and I just let already the paper is becoming a lot more pliable. And then I have this old pokey tool. I don't know, piercing tool. I don't know what brand it is. It's a super awesome one. And already the fibers are able to move. And then I just try to work my way through bending each petal with this little tool. And you can see how uh, you can manipulate the flowers into a shape which gives them a more of a petal shape. Um, what I notice with these flowers is that they are just so stiff, I, they just look ridiculous. So one of the keys is to somehow break down the fibers of your paper and then slowly, uh, it's very time consuming and tedious, but it's worth the effort. You can slowly uh, bend these flowers so that they look more like flowers. And then I kind of used Tim's technique where I started to wrap it around. He used a toothpick, so I have this. And the neat thing about this is it goes from thin to thick. So the very center of the flower I can get to wrap around here. And what you need to do is really push your finger in the space between the petals because that is not something that you've been able to manipulate yet so far using this technique. So I wrapped the very center around the skinniest part of this uh, little piercing tool and really, really push it in with your fingers. And because the paper is still wet, I'm able to have the fibers be more flexible than if it were just completely dry paper. And the paper is not falling apart. It doesn't break even though I've wet it. It's uh, it is holding up really, really well. So the reason why I decided to do this tutorial at the end is because if a lot of people already know how to do that, then you don't have to worry about listening to me talk about it. I mostly wanted to just do a little show and tell to share my album because I was pretty happy with the way it turned out. And because this is a relatively new product, I thought maybe some people are interested in finding out whether it's worth it to buy this album die or not. I think I'm really happy with it. I was so tired of the Traveler's Notebook scoreboard die. I'd made a bunch of those and uh, that whole, it was based on the whole Minori travel uh, journal from Japan that was so popular. And uh, I know a lot of people made a lot of those and I was just wanting to do something different. And this one had me really intrigued because it had the hidden hinge binding system, and I thought, okay, let's give that a try. Alright, so now that I've done that, you can see that it's way too tight, and so you want to let it just kind of loosen up a bit and let it relax. And then what I do, it's still a little wet still, so what I'm doing is coming back and retraining those flowers. Oops, that stuck to my finger. Sorry that didn't happen. <laughs> In the last row, so maybe this isn't going to turn out to be the best uh, to show you guys, but uh, what I did was I just re uh, opened up the edges of the, the flower like this, and I go around and around and around. And because the paper is still wet, it's very pliable, and so I can keep. Uh, doing this to the edges and it it reminds me a lot of what a f cake decorator would have to do to go through making flowers for a cake. It's very intense and I'm sure that if you made a hundred of these you could whip like like we could whip out like ten of them in ten minutes or whatever but um, I just kind of taught myself how to do this this morning so I'm just going to show you guys how I'm doing it. And 
the one thing about my technique is there does seem to be a little hole that gets left in the middle, uh, which is kind of a bummer. There used to be this product called Flower Soft that you could kind of stuff in there and make it look like there was a stamen in there. Um, so in this case, mine uh, came undone, which it didn't happen in the last time. So I'm going to reinsert this and just see if I can pull it back together. So we'll just kind of go like this. This is where you, f you end up feeling like you're a cake decorator. <laughs> it's uh, Someone online had said, die cut four of each size that you want and use all four in one flower. And her method was to make the first one very tight and make that the inside and then make the second one a little looser and then wrap that around the inside and so on and so on. I, her flowers are gorgeous. There's just no way I'm going to be able to do that. I, I, That's not happening here. <laughs> okay, so I'm rewrapping this and the fibers are super pliable which helps a lot. I kind of feel like I'm working in a flower shop and almost there. Almost there. Okay. So I'm going to pull this out and see what we've got. And then I think what I did next was I took my... I have some Art Institute glue with the fine tip. Sorry, I put that away. And I started just inserting the glue into the petals. And then I would glue down the first layer the way I liked it. And then once the first layer was glued down, then I would come go back in and then glue the next layer. And then finally go back in and maybe glue, put that tip deep in there and get that glued in. And then I would just kind of keep gluing it and gluing it until I got it the way I liked it. So this is halfway finished. I'm sorry, I have my glue in the cabinet that I had put away. I was trying to tidy up my uh, table. I was kind of getting tired of looking at all the stuff all over my table all day every day. But you can kind of get a sense for how you can shape it like that. And then now I'll have a third flower that I could add to this if I wanted to. Which I think I might do that. I'm not sure. I think about it. So anyways, thank you so much for watching my tutorial. I'm sorry that my voice is a little hoarse. Um, I didn't sleep well last night. Um, so I thought I would just talk a little bit about the pandemic here where I live. Um, things have calmed down a lot. We think... The infection rate is about what it was this time last year, ironically. And the difference is, is we've got about half of our, half the people in my zip code are not vaccinated. So uh, the number of cases are way down. But at the same time, we're not sure if we're going to be able to get more people vaccinated than that. So we're pretty much anticipating uh, a very interesting transition period. Uh, I live in California and they're planning on ending all restrictions on June 15th. This is a major holiday weekend. We could see a big spike in cases and it'll be remain to be seen if we can keep the cases low and end all restrictions. Um, we're kind of sensing that maybe uh, the rest of the year is going to be uh, more cases and uh, but in, in It'll be different in the sense that it's not likely to, that we're going to be seeing restrictions because the vaccines are widely available. So um, we're just planning on just staying at home and having a lot of quiet time at home. And hopefully things will get better. Um, and it is all to be determined. We'll find out as time goes by. But I think uh, we're probably going to be uh, continuing to see the pandemic uh, carry on. Uh, in the United States um, for the foreseeable future. Um, they're saying that we're going to need at least at least 70% of the population to get vaccinated. That would be the, the ideal, and we're about 50% as a country overall, and, and that pretty much reflects my area as well. So anyways, it'll be... Uh, I feel so badly that the rest of the world needs vaccines, and we have governors in our country offering people a million dollars to win a lottery to get a vaccine. I, I feel that it's an embarrassment uh, to know that my government is resorting to that while 
people around the world are waiting to get a vaccine and would do anything to take this vaccine. Um, anyways, um, uh, I, I hope that everybody's doing well. I hope that um, people are hanging in there. I hope that um, wherever you are in this phase of the pandemic, that your life is giving you something special and different and time to reflect and think and grow and learn and I think crafting is something that we all look to to feel better with so I thought I would just do this little share I haven't shared in a really long time I'm not sure if I'll share again in any any time in the near future things have been stressful and difficult here um, but a little better uh, than they have been in a long time so thanks for watching you guys and I'll see you whenever I get around to doing another video